since my current game still needs more time to finish. I am going to share my TPS FPS swap setup and FOV detection setup this time. Right before I destroy all the wormholes, flying pick lines to optimize my game. So you can download a clean script from in this video. And also I will explain how the template works. If you are nerd enough, I will explain a little bit at the end of this video. In the script, it starts in TPS first, L stick is walk. R stick moves around the camera and aims in FPS. ZL button switches to FPS. ZR button is a shutter, to detect if the object under the camera view. Press ZL again and switch back to TPS. In GBG, the offset in the basic camera cannot be changed once you set it for your game. So you can only have TPS style aim at your character. Or FPS style lock the camera to your character, but change the aim angle. Even if you have your camera attached to a box, and a box constraint to your character, you can't have them both work together. So you need an advanced camera to do this job. The basic idea is camera position has few distances away from the character. The camera target at character location. So you can pan or tilt around the character. Once you swap to FPS, the camera position will go to the character position. And the camera target will move a few distances away from the character. When you move the camera target, it will move around the camera position with the same radius. Due to that 3D transformation, you need a 3D matrix to do the job. I labeled everything inside this game file. I'll stick here to control the person no done, very straightforward. Here is the R stick control on TPS. Z offset means how far the camera away from the character space Z axis, even rotation applied. Y offset means the same, but in terms of the Y axis. You can change the value from these two constant nodons. R stick connected to a counter nodon, which is the camera rotate angle. You can set the range to restrict the rotation range, or no restriction on both. This setup is the camera position offset when during FPS mode. When you just place the camera at the person node on an FPS, you might see something that you don't want to see, such as nose, eyes, or the top of the head. So here you can set how far the camera position away from the person node on. I place it slightly forward from the person node on here. You can also change this constant node on for your adjustment. This one very straightforward, just place the camera target at the person node on in TPS mode. Since the aim is using camera target, this moves the aim box by the input angle. You don't need any control button on this one, it's because the rotated position is programmed by the matrix. The constant node on here defines how far the aim box is from the person node on. It doesn't matter how much you put it here, it won't change speed. Just don't put zero for this. Negative value will inverse the rotate angle. If you want to reverse the rotation angle, I don't recommend changing from here. Rather change the counters up and down and put instead. Most of the FPS setup has an advanced camera that has to turn off the character turn speed, to avoid crazy spinning. But we can see our character under TPS, so I can't turn it off. I created a turn speed hack here for FPS. During FPS, I still let my character turn, but not change the aim box position. It frees the angle when entering FPS. It uses the R stick here to add a new angle to it. So when you move backward in FPS, switch it back to TPS again, you will find your character facing the opposite direction. I think this is not a big issue at the moment. All the multiplies you see here are all multiplied by the ZL button. 
which is the switch between TPS and FPS. Here is the head setup. Since you can't use third person perspective to witness where you are located in FPS mode. So I use a map here to clarify nothing goes wrong in this setup. For the FOV, in the script, I set the camera angle to 50. Based on the switch image aspect on GBG, 46 times 26 is what I found. Using camera terms, this is the FOV of the film gate. If you use a different camera angle, I will show you what it means and how you can find it on different camera angles in the nerdy section. Matrix and inverse matrix section. You don't have to do anything here. Or if you are interested, you can find the meaning of the wormholes. So the car is my target object of my FOV. I linked it to a location sensor. If you have another object for the FOV, copy the setup and link that object to the location sensor. Depth and here means camera depth. Camera depth is different from object distance. So this vector formula cannot find the film gate. This is already set by matrix, you don't have to take care of this part. But if you want to set one of the conditions of how far the object is to the camera, you can take the value from this last node on. Aperture, these values are defined by camera angle. So you can find that I have the same value as I dropped a note there. If you stick with 50 camera angles, you don't have to touch this part. This part to find out where the object is located in camera space. Then check if the object's camera space is inside the FOV. If yes, this node on will return 1. If no, it will return 0. Keep in mind that the object location is only one point. If you need to check the object size inside the FOV, you need to set a range for location check. Then this wormhole will send the signal to my shutter setup here. To give indication to the player. In this video, you might realize that every time I start the game, there has a long camera travel before it starts. That's because the location sensor has a value there. But when you move this location sensor to the person, then this will be fixed. I keep it there in the share file, to avoid messy lines for you to read. While I am creating my game, I have more idea of how to use this FOV setup. Like when Solid Snake is inside a box. When I look at the box, he won't move. When I look away, he will move to create such a mission or enemy. Or like Project Zero, we can see a ghost under camera. But when we take out the camera, the ghost disappears. The FOV detection can mix with other conditions to create more varieties. Okay, let's talk about how to find the aperture in different camera angles. This is the relationship. When the object away from camera 50 unit, then you have to measure the size of horizontal and vertical. I place the boxes to measure the distance and get these values. This value depends on the image aspect. In a physical camera, if you have different film back, this value will be different. Switch aspect is the same, so you will not have this problem once you find the measure from your camera angle. For the matrix, the wormhole U, V, W are the rotation angles. The 3x3 three three matrix will give you rotation and scale transformation value in 3D space. This is how to calculate the new position after the transformation. For example, if I want to offset minus 3 in X, 5 in Y, 7 in Z. Then the formula is like this. 
The first row will give you the new X position. The second row will give you the new Y position. The third row will give you the new Z position. If there is no offset in X, Y, only Z. Anything multiplied to zero is zero, so you can skip that. You will find in the script, I mostly multiply the Z position only. But in some cases you might still want to use other offset values, such as TPS to start with a tilt down angle here. Shooting game to swap left and right shoulder to offset X. Hope you can use this setup to create more great games in GBG. Cheers!